Have you ever been caught in the rabbit hole of buying RAM? Living in fear of leaving performance on the table if you opt for the cheap stuff? Well, so have I, which got me thinking, does RAM speed really matter that much? So to try and answer the question, I decided to run some benchmarks across a range of titles with XMP enabled and XMP disabled. And now for those wondering what XMP is, it stands for Extreme Memory Profile. Now, I bought some Corsair 3600 megahertz RAM for my build, but unless I enable an XMP profile in my BIOS, the RAM will actually run at 2133 megahertz leaving a whopping 1467 megahertz on the table. Now an important note, running XMP is technically an overclock and could void your warranty, not only for your RAM, but other components in your system as well, potentially even your whole system if you bought a pre-built and the system builder forbids it. So if you decide to enable XMP, do your own research and do so at your own risk. As for the system we're using today, I'm running a Ryzen 5600X with an NVIDIA 3070, alongside 32 gig of Corsair DDR4 3600CL16 memory. Not the highest end of systems, but given how it sits uh, firmly in the mid-range, arguably low to mid-range now, I would imagine a lot of others have systems that are quite similar to this in capabilities, so I hope it can be interesting. Anyway, enough of the preamble, let's dive into the data. Starting out with Forza Horizon 5 running in its ultra preset, we see not an insignificant bump at 1080p, going from an average of 107 FPS to 119, that's an 11.2% uplift. But this does drop away quite quickly as we rise up through the resolutions, finally arriving at 4K where we see a much smaller 3.9% improvement. As the improvement that XMP offers degrades as we move up from 1080p into the higher resolutions, to me this indicated that maybe a GPU bottleneck is coming into play. Now, for those of you unsure what a GPU bottleneck is, say that your GPU can output a maximum of 100 frames a second, but your processor, in concert with your RAM, could deliver 200 frames per second should it be paired with a GPU capable of rendering those 200 frames. That's what we call a GPU bottleneck. Sometimes this is also referred to uh, as being GPU limited. Similarly, this can work the other way around. If your GPU can render 200 frames a second, but your CPU can only process 100 of them, your frame rate would be limited to 100 frames per second and therefore you would be CPU limited, or CPU bottlenecked is another way to put it. So to see if we were bottlenecked by the GPU in Forza Horizon 5 in ultra settings, I re-ran the benchmark using the game's low settings. This way we're more likely to run into a CPU bottleneck before we run into the GPU bottleneck. And looking at the data, I'd say that that's most likely the case. You can see that even at 1440p, XMP makes a bigger difference than it did at 1080p ultra settings. Once we hit 4K even at low settings, that GPU limit does start to come back into play, limiting the effectiveness of XMP. But this is, after all, only an NVIDIA 3070, so we'll, uh, we'll cut it a break. Moving on into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, XMP made little to no difference at ultra settings or the balance settings it took, dropping the game down to its minimum settings preset in order to remove that GPU bottleneck before we could start to see the benefits of XMP. And even at the minimum preset, 4K quickly reintroduced this GPU bottleneck. Still, at 1080p and 1440p, XMP increased the average FPS by 15% and 12.9% respectively. It also managed to increase the 1% low performance quite significantly at 1080p and 1440p before having little to no effect at 4K. Into Cyberpunk 2077, and we're seeing modest gains on the average FPS ultra settings. We're not taking massive jumps here, but welcome improvements nevertheless. Similarly, with the minimum FPS recorded during the benchmarking scene, XMP lifted these across the board. Though once again, at 4K, the differences were much less than at the other resolutions, that GPU bottleneck coming back to get us once again. To further prove this point, I reran the benchmark at the game's low preset, which, you guessed it, gave a much bigger uplift when XMP was enabled. Even 4K saw an 8 FPS increase. Arguably, the lows are more important than the averages in order to provide a smooth gameplay experience, so it's great to see XMP being put to good work here. 
F122 continues the trend of GPU bottlenecking uh, as we run the game in ultra settings. Keep in mind that the ultra settings in this game enables ray tracing by default, so it's no wonder we're hitting a GPU bottleneck here. Reducing the game to its low preset gets the GPU bottleneck out of the way, and we start to see some healthy gains at 1080p and 1440p, though once again 4K sees the lowest uplift as those GPU bottlenecks start to creep back in. A Plague Tale Requiem didn't see massive gains to the average FPS, only a few frames in it almost within the margin of error between benchmark runs. However, XMP clearly did help the 1% lows. Again, you shouldn't be ignoring the 1% lows as they tell you so much about the feel of a game. A high average with low 1% lows can indicate a really kind of choppy experience. Seeing these 1% lows rise up with XMP is great to see. Finally, before we jump into my closing thoughts, we have Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now this is a real worst case scenario for the game. For those that don't know, I'm a, I'm a big time flight simmer. I've got a whole other YouTube channel dedicated to flight simming. Uh, the hobby has got me hooked in a big way and as such I run the game with a ton of mods to increase the quality of the simulation. This does however put a lot more strain on the system, specifically the CPU, and I was curious to see how the RAM speeds can help in a game that I know for a fact is CPU limited. So for this one I only ran at 1080p for the benchmarks um, at the ultra setting without any DLSS. Now, for those shocked uh, by the low FPS numbers that you're seeing, this is nothing new to flight simmers. 30 FPS is widely considered to be pretty good for flight sim running, especially when you're running a lot of mods. In my case, I'm running a third-party aircraft, a Boeing 737-800 from PMDG, along with FSLTL, which is a mod that loads in aircraft at the gates uh, airports. So if you, say, landed at Heathrow and you were taxiing around, you'd see lots of British Airways planes parked up, Virgin Atlantic, American Delta, and so on. Um, this all takes a big hit on the CPU. So you'll see during this benchmark capture that XMP gets us across the all-important FPS line on the uh, averages and raises the lows up quite a bit in relative terms in order to give us a smoother experience. So that's a big thumbs up for XMP in this game. I wouldn't want to be going live on my Flight Sim channel without it, that's for sure. Um, on which subject, I'll leave a link in the description just in case by chance any of you are into Flight Sim. Um, you can head on over there, maybe that's your thing. So what are we to make from all of this data? In general, it seems that if you run your games at a resolution that's higher than 1080p at a high graphics quality setting, then the gains XMP can offer aren't that great due to constantly running into a GPU bottleneck. But be careful before drawing premature conclusions. Going back to my example earlier of your CPU in concert with your RAM, being able to process 200 frames per second for the sake of argument, but your GPU can only render 100 frames a second, therefore limiting your frame rate to 100 FPS. Now, consider how this flips if you replace the GPU with a much more powerful one, one that, for example, could render 300 frames per second. Now, you're limited by your CPU and your memory. If enabling XMP took your 200 FPS up to 225, it would therefore be worth enabling it as you'd be in a position where you'd actually get to see those frames as you've got that GPU horsepower to back you up. I think as we move forward with newer and faster GPUs, technologies like XMP that increase the speed of our RAM will become all the more important to keep our CPUs well fed as they race to keep up with the latest and greatest in graphics hardware. So in my case, uh, you know, with a 3070, maybe I won't see the benefit of XMP all the time if I crank up the settings. Um, I think it is worth considering if you're going to be running higher end stuff, and especially as we march forward with new GPU generations, this stuff's going to be important. Let me know in the comments, do you run XMP or maybe you go even further and start manually tuning stuff? I'd love to hear from you. I'd be curious to see how you all feel about this and if you found XMP and you know, manually tuning memory makes a difference in your setups. I hope you found the video useful. If you have, please leave it a like. It really goes a long way to helping the video and the channel. And while you're down there, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.